Good evening. Welcome to the Holmes Road Church of Christ evening service. I hope uh, you were able to join this morning and uh, listen to Stan's wonderful message. We're going to open up our evening service with prayer. Dear God, we again come before you and just thank you for letting us come together and worship you. Please help us encourage our members. Help them to be encouraged by this message this evening. And help us to always stay faithful to you. Let us be a shining beacon, Lord, in our community when we go to work or if we're at home or we interact with people that we are Christians and that we believe in you and that we trust in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm in the way, the bright and shining way. I'm in the glory land way. Telling the world that Jesus saves today. Yes, I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. Heaven is nearer and the way groweth clearer. For I'm in the glory land way. Listen to the call, the gospel calls to Get in the glory land way. Wanders come home, oh, hasten to obey. For I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. Heaven is nearer and the way groweth clearer. For I'm in the glory land way. Onward I go rejoicing in His love. I'm in the glory land way. Soon I shall see Him in that home above. I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. Heaven is nearer and the way groweth clearer. For I'm in the glory land way. There's a land that is fairer than day. And by faith we can see it apart. For the Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. We shall sing on that beautiful shore. The melodious song of the bliss, and our spirits shall sorrow no more. Not a sign for the blessing of rest. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. To our bountiful Father above, we will offer our tribute of praise for the glorious gift of His love and the blessings that hallow our days in the sweet by and by. On that beautiful shore, in the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. 
shall meet on that beautiful shore. Good evening, church. I hope uh, you are having a great Sunday in the Lord and uh, having a great time of worship. I hope this morning was an encouragement. And if you haven't taken a communion, I'd ask you to watch the morning service and enjoy a communion service uh, with the church. Uh, but tonight I do have a little bit of uh, of uh, open and encouraging word for all of you. And I'm going to be looking at the book of Hebrews chapter 12. I don't know about you guys, but summertime is rough on me. I'm not a big summer guy. I'm more of a fall winter kind of guy. I like the cool weather and I like the fact you don't have to pull weeds. <coughs> summertime is the time of doing a lot of yard work. I know many of you enjoy that. I, there are many of you that I know I've talked to you. I, my brother J.D. Forrest, he loves to get out there and work in the yard and make, and make the yards look good and stuff. And a lot of people enjoy doing that. I don't. It's not my thing. I have really bad allergies. I mean, if I just mow the lawn, I'm usually sneezing the rest of the day. And, and uh, pull weeds is, oh man, it just really gets my allergies going. It's just not my thing. I, I don't enjoy yard work. Uh, I found some interesting statistics. I saw this where it says 78% of homeowners in all of America take care of their lawns and landscape, which is kind of sad because that means 22% don't take care of it at all. They just let it go. But 78% uh, actually take care of the lawn. But look at this. Of that 78%, only 5% say they do all the work themselves. Now think about how low that is. 5% of that 78% say they do all of the landscaping and the pulling the weeds and the llama, they do it all themselves. 44% of Americans say they hire outside professionals to perform all the services. 44% of homeowners, of that, or the, of that 78% that take care of their lawns, 44% of that 78% hire professionals to do everything, meaning they don't have to worry about lawn mowing. They don't have to worry about yard, pulling weeds, any of that stuff. They hire pros to do it. But 51%, which is the majority, 51% have some sort of combination of hiring others to do it as well as they do some. So they may hire a, a landscaping service, but they'll do the mowing themselves. There's some sort of combination there. But anyways, think about that. Only 5% of Americans do all their own yard work and landscaping. Why is that number so low? It's probably less than that because it's 5% of the 78%, remember. But so, you know, that seems awfully low to me. Why do you, why do you think that is? Well, like I said, it, yard work is just, it's not fun work. Some people enjoy that, I'm glad you do, but it's just, the vast majority of people don't find it fun. It, it's hard back-breaking work, and it's especially hot I mean, in the summertime. It's hot when you have to do it. it it's, it's 100 degrees, 90 degrees out there, and it, it's, it's just tough. And, and like I said, it gets my allergies going. It, it's not fun. And when I look at, at the passage I want to look at this morning, or this evening, in the book of Hebrews chapter 12, and look at verse 15, God asks us to manage the weeds in our own life and in our own heart. Turn to Hebrews chapter 12 and look at verse 15. Because this requires some weeding and some yard work, if you will. Let's look at this together. The writer of Hebrews says, <clears throat> See to it that no one falls short of the grace of God, that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. See to it that no one falls short of the grace of God and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. Now that where it says bitter root, that's talking about those weeds. Weeds are bitter roots. And he says, make sure that no bitter root grows in you. Now I want to talk about that phrase, see to it here for just a second. See to it. That's what the NIV translates that word there is. As see to it. If you have a King James, it says looking diligently is, is how it's translated in the King James. But the Greek word there is the Greek word episkopos. Now, episkopos, you probably heard that word before in our studies of elders. 
It's a contraction. It's a, it's a contraction word, and it consists of two different words. It's a contraction of epi and skopos. Now, the word epi in Greek means over. Uh, it means to be over something. And then skopos means to look at. And that's where we get our word like microscope. It means to look at something. Well, that's what... And so when you contract those two words together, it means to look over or to take a supervisory oversight of. And so that's uh, what this word episcopos really means. Now, like I said, you probably heard the word episcopos when we talk about elders, because it, in 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1, <coughs> we see that same word episcopos translated as overseer. And some people use it as the word bishop. Uh, I know when, when Roger Lewis got the, became an elder here, I, as a joke, I just called him uh, Bishop Raj for a couple months. But, uh, but, uh, and that's what that word episcopos means. It, it is a bishop, and all a bishop means is an overseer. And we don't often use the word bishop, uh, but it is a biblical word coming from this word episcopos. It refers to the job of the, in, in 1 Timothy, it's referring to the job of the elders of how the church, uh, or how the elders of the church oversee the flock. Their job is to, is to look over in that supervisory oversight of the flock. And so elders in 1 Timothy 3 are to be the overseers of the operations and the functions and the daily life of the local congregation. They're supposed to be overlooking, supervising, and taking that overvisory uh, that overlooking supervisory uh, aspect of all the sheep that are in the congregation. And so, as I said, sometimes this word is translated to bishop, and that's where we, we come in here in Hebrews 12 and verse 15, where it says, see to it, or if you have the King James looking diligently, that's that same word, episkopos. The writer of Hebrews is, is alerting you to the fact that you are, in a way, in that sense, the bishop of your own heart. You are the elder of your own heart. You are the one who is responsible to make sure that those bitter weeds, those bitter roots that begin to grow in your life, you're the one that's responsible for them. You have the oversight and the responsibility for your life for your attitude and the heart that in your heart, in the same way the elders have oversight of the church. We know it's easy for us to look at the elders and get on their case if they're not doing their job well. But we are being required here in Hebrews to look at ourselves and to police ourselves and to supervise our own selves in that same way that we hold the elders to a high standard. Oftentimes, when we have a bad attitude, we seem to blame others. <clears throat> We're often tempted to blame others for our bad attitudes, our bitterness, our resentments, or our anger that we feel for other people. You say, well, why are you mad? Well, I'm mad because old so-and-so, and we start to blame others. But the Hebrew writer here is alerting us and letting us know that we do not have the right to do that. You alone are responsible to weed out the bitter weeds that are growing in your heart. Only you can take control of what is inside you. When you look around at maybe your neighbors, maybe you, uh, you, maybe you, are, you know the 22% of the people in the world that don't take care of their yard. There is only one reason why weeds grow out of control in someone's yard. And the reason is, is because no one would take the proper time or care to uproot them. Have you ever seen a house that's just gone wild with weeds and the lawn looks horrible? It's extremely high and, and you, you've seen it, just these run down places because the fact of the matter is the owner of that place just doesn't care. They don't take time to, to care for the lawn or to pull up all the weeds or to, or to landscape their place. When a garden is choked by weeds, the gardener has no right to complain, for he did not do the necessary labor. If, if people are complaining, the owner has no reason to complain because they're sitting in their house 
being lazy and not doing the work that, to, that they're supposed to do to make sure that their house looks good. And so here in the Hebrews, he borrows this, this sense. The Hebrew writer borrows this, this word, episkopos, and he says, see to it. See to it. Episkopos. I want you to oversee your heart. Be meticulous. Work hard and labor to keep the condition of your heart right with God. We're all supposed to be working very diligently every day to see to it that not a single weed pops up in our hearts. The elders cannot oversee what is inside you. They don't know your heart. They, they have responsibility of the flock, but that only goes so far. They cannot read one's mind. They can't look inside your heart. <clears throat> you have to be the elder of your own heart. You have to, to examine it daily. You cannot expect someone to take care of the weeds in your own life for you. This is what the Hebrew writer is trying to let you know. You have that responsibility. You have to see to it that no one falls short of the glory of God and that no bitter root grows up in you and causes trouble and defiles you, you, you and many others. It is your soul. You have that responsibility. You must do the work to protect it. If you're like me and you hate to do yard work, you hate to pull weeds, some people have that same feeling spiritually. I don't like to look at myself. I don't like to self-examine. I don't like to have to do the hard work that says, Stan, you're wrong here, and you need to take care of this situation. Many people just want to bury their head in the sand and just kind of keep plodding through life, and they don't want to do the work it takes. And the Hebrew writer suggests we do in this verse. So to conclude tonight's lesson, I just want to remind you that you are the one who's in charge of keeping your heart right. Are you diligently, attentively, laboriously, daily working on the weeds in your own heart? Are you getting lazy and not tending to the garden of your heart? Are the, are the elder or the bishop or the overseer, are you being the elder of your own heart? Or are you relying on someone else to do that for you? Because they can't. It's your responsibility. And that is the lesson for you tonight. If there's one thing this COVID-19 has done, it has all given us a chance to, to look into ourselves and maybe do the hard work of pulling the weeds out in our own heart. And so I ask that all of you tend to your weeds and so we can come back together stronger. That is the lesson for you this evening. If you need to contact us, if you have any prayer requests, you have any needs, you want to put Christ on a baptism, you want to study more, whatever your need is, give the elders a call, give myself a call. We will make sure that it works for you. Let's go ahead and sing our final song tonight. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in, and then the light from heaven filled my soul. It paid my heart in love and wrote my name above, and just a little talk with Jesus made me whole. Have a little talk with Jesus, let us tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our faintest cry, and he will answer by and by. Now when you feel a little breath for the yearning as your heart in heaven is turning you will find a little talk with jesus makes it right sometimes my passing dream without a ray of cheer and then a cloud of doubt may hide the light of day the sins must in me rise then hide the starry skies but just a little talk with jesus clears the way now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our trouble. He will hear our faintest cry. And he will answer by and by. If you feel a little prayer for the year, as your heart in the heaven is turning, you will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. 
I may have doubts and fears, my eyes be filled with tears, but Jesus is a friend who watches day and night. I go to him in prayer, he knows my every care, and just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus, let us tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our fingers cry, and he will answer by and by. Now when you feel a little prayer for the yearning, as your heart in heaven is turning, you will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. It makes it right. I don't have any additional announcements other than what was announced this morning. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, it's again that we've listened to your word twice today. We pray that it will prick our hearts and that we will want to be most closer to you today than we were yesterday. Be with us as we leave this place, may we take you and your word with us. Forgive us our sins. In your son's blessed name we pray. Amen. <laughs>